right, I got one more, one more uh, spooky story. This is this is the spookiest of all the spooky stories uh, that I have. Uh, so this is, gosh, what year was it? This is about tw- this is 2013. So this is uh, a number of years ago, and I'd like just started touring around the country uh, a whole lot, right? And this was a week where I had I had 14 shows in a span of seven days, which is a a lot. Uh, of shows. And, you know, so I was traveling back and forth. I was in a festival in Cleveland. I had a college gig. And then on the weekend, I was doing this club. I was doing this little club in upstate New York. It's called the Lake Ontario Playhouse. And uh, it's, you know, it, it's six and a half hours away from Pittsburgh. I'd done all this driving. I'm super exhausted. And I was driving up. All this weirdness even starts in the drive alone, right? I'm driving up, uh, I'm driving up I-90 and I see the, 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 flashing of light behind me and I'm like fuck this is fucking I this is exactly what I need in this week right uh and so I pull over to the side of the road and I'm, I go over and I'm getting all my uh you know license registration and then I I come up and I look in the rear view mirror and there's nothing behind me there's no cop car there's nothing uh and I was like this is fucking weird what a weird thing that happened and I put myself away and then I went went on uh on my way and I get to the club, and the club is like this big old theater, right? And uh, I walk in, I'm, I'm reading some of the stuff, and this club has been around since like the early 1900s. They used to do a bunch of old plays here. They used to do a bunch of vaudeville plays. Um, you know, it, it, it somewhat survived the Depression. It got a big revival. And then in the 70s, things started tapering off. And then the 80s, during the comedy boom, it became a comedy club and, and basically has been that uh, since then. So I walk in, the owner shows me where the, where the comedy condo is, right? And usually these comedy condos uh, are abandoned houses. That's just what they do, right? They're, they're like, you're, you're a comedian. You're basically a trucker with jokes. Uh, here's, <laughs> here's a shack we found for you. Is that good? The toilet doesn't work, but hey, you'll figure it out, right? Like that's... Essentially what they do, but this, like, we walked up the stairs and it was super weird because there's stuff on this side, there's stuff on this side, there's, like, creepers running up on the wall, and, you know, and we go through, and I walk in, and the room is actually pretty darling, right? It's, it's kind of like a bed and breakfast uh, type situation, like, I, I, I expected to be pampered, that, we, that didn't happen, but I kind of, I was, like, half expecting somebody to be like, I made you eggs and bakey in the morning, like... <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I thought they were gonna give me my own butler for a second. <laughs> so I go in, awesome, super awesome room, and uh, you know we come down and we do the first show. I meet my, I meet the headliner for the weekend, uh, very funny comedian by the name of Mike Stork, and you know me and Mike start talking, we're hanging out, and immediately up front we see a very drunk uh, table right? Like it's like a table of six or seven people and they're all hammered. And we find out that it's one of the ladies birthday and she's not even drunk. Like most of her friends got hammered on her birthday and she's like basically sober. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I think you need new friends. Like that's basically what I, what I, so I went on stage and uh, I, I was trying to like calm the, the, the group down uh, so, so they would like shout at me and they, but they wouldn't yell at the headliner. Right. I was trying to get them all calmed down. Uh, and I basically like, I, I, I was doing a lot of, uh, of pro gay jokes at that point. Uh, this was like before, you know, uh, being gay was like a cool thing. Uh, you, you know, like, like they didn't have a whole, they didn't have like pride going on or anything like, like, and so, and this is upstate New York, uh, where I think like gay was still, uh, an insult to people um like they could like throw that around and everybody's like no i'm not I'm, that's not me I, I love i love pussy i'm i'm, I'm I'll, I'll fuck somebody right in front of you right now let's buy a prostitute like it's like that kind of machismo uh <laughs> like still existed up there so i made some reference uh about sucking somebody's dick and then immediately <laughs> Uh, so I was like, I gotta get these people to shut the fuck up. And, and then immediately they did. Uh, and I get off stage. I did my closer. I get off stage. I walked to the headliner and the headline Mike was like, Hey, 
thanks for quieting those people. And then immediately afterwards, the host of the show re-engages the drunk crowd and they come right back into it. And he was like, well, thanks for trying. Right. So it was just like really difficult night. Uh, and then after the show, we're all hanging out. We ha we're having a drink and, you know, um, I'm, it's like two o'clock by the time we, we finish hanging out. Uh, and I was like, Hey Mike, are you, are you staying here? And he's like, eh, I'm not really sure. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go to bed and I go upstairs and I pass out I wake up the next day, go and have breakfast with Mike and his, and his friend that he's, uh, he's traveling with. And we meet at a Cracker Barrel because that's what you do when you're on the road, right? You, it's, it's, it's either uh, a, uh, uh, a Waffle House or a Cracker Barrel. Those are, those are the designated spots they, where they allow comedians to, uh, to eat uh, when you're on tour. <laughs> but so we're sitting there and we're at a Cracker Barrel and we start bullshitting. And he goes, hey, uh, did you stay at the, at the condo last night? I was like, yeah, I stayed at the condo last night. And he was like, well, how was it? I was like, it was fine. Everything was fine. Why? What's, what's up? And he was like, well, I posted that I'm playing the club and a couple of my friends immediately messaged me and told me that I should, uh, I should find other places to stay. And I was like, what? And, he's like, and he was like, yeah, a couple of them just said like the condo was weird. Like, was it weird? Did something weird happen? And I was like, no, everything was, everything was fine. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you doing right now? What is this? <laughs> what? what is this game you're playing right now? And he was like, no, I'm just saying, you know, like a couple of people told me like it was, it was really fucking weird. And, and I thought maybe you had like a weird experience. And I was like, look, I get it. Okay. I have an older sister. I know exactly what the fuck you're doing. And I'm not, I'm here to Yay. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you did. Um, HP Lovecraft. That's all I'm going to say. And we're going to move on. <laughs> 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 so, so I was like, listen, I'm going to enjoy my breakfast uh, and I'm going to eat your biscuits and we're going to fucking move on. <laughs> so we have lunch and I go back to the I go back to the condo. I end up talking to the owner and the owner tells me there's a third floor above the above the, the little condos. That's like a big studio apartment. And he's reconverting that. For his brother, right? His brother moved to New York, ended up having a kid, and he was like, hey, turns out New York City, not a great place for babies. Uh, lots, uh, lots of just things that are unsafe for babies, mostly just the fact that it's New York City, right? right. Um, so he wanted to move back. So he was going to stay with, uh, with, with him and his, uh, his, his wife and his kid up on this, this renovated like studio apartment type situation. I was like, oh, that's very cool. Uh, and I went back in, I'm doing some work and Mike texts me and says, Hey, we're going to come over and take a nap before the show. Can you just turn on the heater in, um, in our room? And I said, sure. So I go in, turn the heater, I go out, I hear Mike come in, I say hello. And then I go downstairs and, and hang out for, for a little while. Right. So this is about maybe, I don't know, six thirty, seven o'clock or something like that. And I'm bullshitting with the, with the owner's kid who was going to host a show. Right. And he was like, interested in comedy and i was trying to tell him like don't ruin your life uh <laughs> you know. like i was like really trying to scare straight him with comedy like that's what they should do <laughs> for scared straight programs in prisons it's like look you could be a stand-up comedian do you want that because that's that's what will happen to you <laughs> and then all crime will stop if people are like forced to live like a comedian but <laughs> um Anyway, so I'm talking to this kid uh, for, for a while and I look at the clock and I'm like, shit, it's, it's almost showtime. I got to go get Mike. Mike's not even down here. So I walk into the showroom and Mike comes out and he goes, hey, there you are. And I was like, all right, hey, that's a weird greeting. Uh, and he was like, weren't you just upstairs? <laughs> Like, weren't you just upstairs? I was like, no, I've been, I've been down here for, for like an hour and a half. Like, what's... Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, I swear to God, I heard somebody upstairs. Like, and I thought it was you. I heard somebody pacing on the hallway and I thought it was you. And I was like, no, I've been down here this whole time. There's no way it could have been me. And he turns to the owner and he was like, were you upstairs? And he's like, no, man, I've been setting up the stage and setting up the room the entire time uh, and helping out the bar. So, you know, I don't, I don't think anybody's like been upstairs. And he was like, no, I swear to God, somebody was walking up and down 
And then I called out and I saw these footsteps, the shadow of footsteps underneath my door. And when I said, hey, Krish, Krish, is that you? The footsteps ran away. And I thought you got embarrassed because you were doing like a pre-show pacing. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I get it. I have an older sister. I know what you're doing. You can go fuck yourself. <laughs> <And I was laughs> like, <laughs> HP Lovecraft, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but... So, so then Mike was also, first of all, let's say that there is something uh, ghastly. Uh, why would you, why would you give it my name? Why would you not, <laughs> just like, you think it's, I'm not saying there is something like scary up there, but you think there's something scary up there. And you were like, well, let's just throw my new friend, Krish <laughs> under the table also, like, have you not seen a horror? Like, I'm a minority, dude. Like, that's you don't make it easier for the minority person to die in a horror situation. That's just not how it works. You should you should make it a little bit. You should even out the scales just a little bit, right? Like, I should be equipped with like a flamethrower or something uh, at this point. But I, you know, I was just like, Mike, whatever. I'm not. I don't, I'm, this is not the headspace I want to be in. So I went and I was, you know, looking over my set and stuff and uh, we go do the show, uh, you know, and it was, a again, it was just a weird fucking show. Uh, there was a bachelorette party uh, and they were like, we like your sweater vest. And I was like, that's not a sentence people say out loud. So <laughs> <laughs> They're like, let's buy you a shot. And I was like, let's, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> please don't <laughs> send any and then they sent like three shots to the stage and I was like this is gonna end weird so <laughs> <laughs> and then it did I took off my sweater vest nobody was happy uh, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do I do think I like I think I kind of forgot my closer <laughs> like uh, but I got off stage and you know um the, the show goes fine, and uh, I, I get a, the check handed to me, and uh, Mike was like, hey, we're, we're actually going to Canada, so we're going to try to drive up and catch the border early so that, you know, we don't have to deal with all that traffic. And I was like, that's cool, man. Keep in touch, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now it has become very, very aware uh, to me that I am the only person in this very old, very large theater in the middle of nowhere in New York <laughs> Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to kind of like keep this information to myself. Uh, nobody else needs to know that I'm alone in this fucking weird place. And I was like, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get up early in the morning and I'm going to get the fuck out of Dodge. Right. Cause I had to drive back to Pittsburgh and do another show. So, uh, I text my girlfriend at the time that, you know, I'm like going to go to bed and stuff. And I turn on the TV and I'm watching something and, and I'm going to bed and I'm doing one of those like where, where you kind of fall asleep and then you realize you're asleep and you're like, oh, shit. Nope. I'm still awake. I'm, st I'm still here. Let's do this. <laughs> like I just kept doing that over and over again. And then all of a sudden, like I just <gasps> wake up like all the air out of my lungs have, has been taken out. And I was just like, what the fuck? And I was like, OK, all right, I'm fine. And then immediately after that, I start hearing creaks, right? And they start getting really consistent as if they were footsteps. And I remember there's another space upstairs. And I was like, okay, all right. You're freaking yourself out. You just need to chill out. No big deal. And I like laid back and I put my head on the pillow. And immediately as I did that, Everything in my body was like, nope, you got to fucking leave. You got to go. You got to get out of here. You got to leave. Like all the alarm bells are going off, right? And I like, so I get up and I grab all my things. I pack up my bags. I pack up my computer and I get all my stuff together, right? I'm still like PJs. I didn't change into jeans because I thought maybe the noise of the jeans would like disturb whatever spirit is above me. Like maybe it's like not a jeans kind of spirit, you know? It's like, you got to wear dress pants in a theater. I don't know, right? Like, as I'm getting my shit together, like, I've already concocted a story of, like, this is, like, an actor that wanted to be in Phantom of the Opera, but, like, just couldn't. And, and then, like, he killed himself in the, uh, you know, in, in the dressing room. And everybody was like, well, the show must go on. And then, like, they did, you know. And, like, now he just kind of, like, haunts uh, and is, like, looking for auditions, even as a ghost 
uh, cause that's, that's how ghosts work is like, they can't tell that they're ghosts. Uh, so they just kind of keep doing things as if they weren't ghosts. And it's just like, no, you can walk through walls. You don't need an agent. You just, <laughs> you don't need that right now. <laughs> so I can talk to the story. I freaked myself out. And I was like, all right, if there is something outside this door, I got to have a plan B. And I was like, the window. The window is the plan B. And I unlock the window and I like just just open it up a little bit. Uh, and then I open the door and I just bolt, right? I like run, th- run down the stairs. I open up the showroom and I'm like bolting through the showroom. I'm pretty sure I've knocked over like a chair and a table and I like jump kick the door, which the door was way too heavy <laughs> for me to jump kick. Like it was like a huge like metal door. So then I like jump kick the door, I miss, and then I had to like go in and unlock the door. I jump back, I jump in my car, <laughs> and I back up and I look up at where I was staying, at the room I was staying, and I immediately realized, oh, if I would have jumped out of this window, I would have 100% broken my legs uh, <laughs> and just been <laughs> like laying <laughs> in a very cold dirt fucking driveway in upstate New York and I would have 100% made the news, right? Like they would have just been like (laughs) drunk skinny comedian destroys comedy club. Like that's that's, (laughs) that's the news story, right? And like, so I just drove uh, through through the night and I wound up like sleeping at a rest stop uh, outside, outside the Pennsylvania, New York border. And I made it back home, you know, and I went and I did my show and I'm hanging out with the, with my then girlfriend, the girl that I was dating at the time. And she was, you know, hanging out with me and uh, we were like just watching some shows and kind of bullshitting here and there. And I was, and I told her like what had happened, you know, and uh, how freaked out I was about everything. And she goes, well, here's the thing though. If it was a ghost, you're fine. But if it was a demon, <laughs> then it probably followed you. And I was like, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> why? What? What the? F- why <laughs> Why would you say it right now is when you decided to say that when it's still fresh in my mind like this? You don't want to wait. And so I stood up and I shut the kitchen window and I locked it and I locked my door and I took a chair and I propped it up again. <laughs> Just because you guys know how like demons are very polite about <laughs> wanting your souls and stuff. And they're like, hey, can I come in? I want to eat your soul and like maybe like make a deal with you or something like, you know how demons like they're super, super polite about stuff. <laughs> And immediately I looked at her and I was like, we are sleeping with the lights on. And she was like, one, you're not five. And two, I can't do. And I was like, well, then you shouldn't have said anything. (laughs) 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 Just kept that one to yourself. I need to watch something nice. (laughs) (laughs) So I I, I was, I was working part-time at a, at a museum at the time and, so I'm telling this story to to one of uh, one of the coworkers at the museum, and he kind of at the end of it kind of gives me this puzzled look, and I was like, "What? What's up? What, what, are you going to say something fucked up?" And he was like, "No, no, no. Uh, I how old was this building?" And I was like, "I don't know, like early 1900s." And he was like, "Okay." And he was like, "And and really, like it probably hasn't been renovated since the 70s or 80s, right? Like so so it probably has like pipes." like metal pipes that lead outside. And I'm assuming that it's made, it's like wood exterior. And I was like, yeah, it's wood exterior. And he was like, well, so if there's, if there's pipes that lead to the exterior, the inside of the building is going to be one temperature and the outside of the building is going to be another temperature. So like cold air will go up the pipes and the pipes will expand and contract in a, in, in a very like, you know, consistent way, which will make creeks and it'll kind of echo around the building and that's probably what you heard. And I was like, okay. And he's like, well, here's the other thing is human beings have like a flight or, fight or flight response. And 
your first instinct was to to run away from it. So like it probably triggered a very old, like ancient, you know, fight or flight response. Like you you probably just don't come from fight people. You you come from flight people. Like that's <laughs> And for for like a, a solid minute, I was like, "Oh fuck, thank you. It's not a demon. Okay, that's great." Because I was gonna like buy holy water from you know some online preacher or something. I I looked up. A, there's a, people that send packets of holy water. And I was, <laughs> that's true. Like I was gonna call Peter Papa for a minute and just <laughs> be like, "Send me that <laughs> holy water, bro." <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> but and then and then once I thought that I was like wait a minute, I'm not I'm I don't come from fight people. I come from flight people. Wait a minute. Did you just scientifically call me a pussy? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one is better at this point, right? Like I don't I don't know if like the explanation of possibly a demon is following me around or scientifically we have proven that I'm a pussy. Like, I don't know which one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a better response. <laughs>